I'm the board game captain. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be reviewing and showing you a bit of how to play Lucky's Misadventures, episode 42, Lost in Autopia. Now, don't worry, episodes 1 through 41 were actually also lost in Autopia. This is really the first game, it's just kind of a joke, like it's supposed to be part of a serial. But uh, this is a game that was designed by Jay Meyer and published by Great Northern Games. And this game is uh, themed, it's a, it's a deck building game that is themed to be that you were following uh, your dog on a walk and he got loose and he led you through a portal into Oddtopia, which is a strange other world that is sort of like Oz from The Wizard of Oz, crossed with Wonderland from Alice in Wonderland, and maybe a few other things like that, but with like a dark twist. It's very dark and mysterious and kind of, kind of a little bit wicked. Um, so the game is listed as two to four players, ages 10 and up, and for 45 to 60 minutes. So let's start there. So, uh, we've played this game at two and four players. I don't think we ever got to try it at three? I thought we did. Oh, did we? Yeah. Oh, my mistake. Okay, so we played it at all player counts then. I, I think we play with four players. I don't remember four players, but I remember three. Okay, I'm, I might be misremembering a bit here. Okay, we've waited at a few different player counts, and it seems to play fairly well regardless of player counts, mm -hmm. at least to, to, to my knowledge. Um, I might be misremembering. I thought we played it at a four and not three, and you're saying, we, okay. Huh. Okay, well, moving on. Uh, ages 10 and up, um, I think that's probably a pretty good estimate. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a deck builder. It's uh, not overly complicated. So uh, I, I, I would say that a 10-year-old in, in a house that plays games will be fine with it. Mm -hmm. uh, 45 to 60 minutes, probably a pretty good estimate, too. I don't think we've ever had a game go really over an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, can you think, would you basically the same on that one? Yeah, because there's, I mean, if there's an end to it. There's a definite end. Yeah. Like it, 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 there's no way for this game to go on and on at mm -hmm. There's There's a, uh, a timing deck. That it, when the cards run out the second time, boom, the game's over. So there's uh, a maximum number of turns in there. Now, we're also going to show off, we got, uh, we had picked this up in uh, Gen Con 2018, and we had gotten some, uh, well, you bought it. You had mm -hmm. gotten some promotional material with it that you paid a little extra for. One was we got this game mat, which you're going to be seeing out when we play the game. Now, normally, and I just wanted to mainly address this, because this game mat is awesome, but it does not normally come with the game. You're going to see this out when we're playing, and normally you would just kind of put the cards out on the on, table yeah uh it's just the mat uh helps you very easily to remember how many of each card needs to come out so then we also so the first thing we got here i'm gonna let you uh pull out some other things here but we've got the rule book here uh so i read through the rule book now the rule book i i have a uh some things i really like about it uh there's a lot of funny asides which crack me up very amusing there's lots of diagrams and explanations which i like I was not a huge fan on the way it was structured. It, it went through telling you how to read all of the cards before it even did the setup. And then the setup was way later on page 12. Now, um, I, did, I did learn how to play this, but I was a little confused. I would have liked the setup first before it explained. But maybe that's just a personal gripe in the way I mm -hmm. like my rule books organized i don't know if that's really a real gripe or not but I, I figured i should mention it anyway the total of the rule book is 19 pages which includes a full example round which is awesome the example round is very helpful for learning how to play uh lots of diagrams and uh it took me a little while a little while to read it but once i'd read it it was very quick to teach i i was able to teach you very quickly and then we taught other people very quickly so uh yeah now normally it comes with a hard for this but this was another promotional material that Lynn got her hands on because she was quite excited for this game actually uh, this is a really cool metal coin that was available I'm not sure if you can get it anymore from Great Northern Games for Feed the Toad and on the back it has a picture of uh, a silhouette of Lucky and it says Lucky's Misadventures so we use this instead of the card and uh, the next we have a couple of nice cardboard um, cheat sheets that are double sided here on uh on one side they give you all of the formulas for turning junk into machines and on the other they give you like the turn order and some of the possible win conditions and all of that these are really good my only complaint about these is i wish there were more of them since you can play up to four players and there's only two mm -hmm. you kind of have to share but uh but the sheets themselves are really good sturdy and durable very nice 
then we have the cards. The cards are linen finish, which I love. Um, another thing we got promo cards of is, so the basic game comes with the lucky cards, uh, with the picture of lucky lucky is on the cover of the box, but we got some promo cards with variant versions of lucky where he's other kinds of dogs. And I love these. I'm not sure if you can still get these from the company, but if you can, I think they're, they're freaking adorable. There's all different versions of lucky. Here's one as a German shepherd, for instance, or, a, or a collie or a bug. This is so cute. Anyway, so the cards are really nice. Um, this is the back of the cards. It says Lucky's Misadventures. And they're linen finished. They feel thick and substantial. And I mean, we've played this a bunch at this point. And there's been a lot of shuffling because it's a deck builder. And these, I mean, I don't see any nicking or um, at all, like any damage to any of the cards. Have you noticed any damage to any of the cards? No. So these, I mean, these cards are, are pretty great. I'm just going to show a few from different kinds of cards because you're going to see a lot more when they're out on the table. But the artwork is really nice. I like the, um, it's kind of, they kind of went for the more serious type of Disney movies, but done a bit darker mm -hmm. in the artwork style. And I kind of dig that. I'll talk more about that in the review, but also that they're, they're substantial, they're thick and they're, they're definitely nicely made. Did you have anything you wanted to talk about the components? No. No. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to head right to the table and show you how this game plays. And we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how the game feels and we're going to rate it and review it. Okay, so here we are set up for a two-player game of Lucky's Misadventures. We are using a few promotional bits we got, like this cool mat and that awesome metal coin instead of just the token. Those don't normally come with this game, so just a big FYI to you guys on that one. Um, so the way you set up is you have to start with, uh, is it three of each of the main, uh, the starting minions? So three Scarecrows, three Tin Men, and three Lions, correct? Yes. And then you also get one lucky card. Mm -hmm. And then you also choose to either take uh, a clockmaker, a flying monkey, or a white rabbit. You shuffle those together and draw five cards. You then have to shuffle up the maven deck and deal five out face up on the table. You shuffle out the, I believe these are called the assistants, mm -hmm. and you flip the top one face up on tap. You shuffle up the, the junk deck and deal four up face up on the table, and you place the machine deck here. Uh, that is placed face up because you search through it to find things when you sacrifice machine uh, parts from the junk of the appropriate quantities, which are on the lovely cheat sheet that you have to have out here, which is a very useful cheat sheet. You also shuffle up the fate deck and discard three cards face down to keep people from uh, card counting. And then we're ready to start the first turn. So for the first turn, we start with the feed the toad phase. So Lynn has uh, got the feed the toad card. So she deals up three cards. What do we got? We got a, a sword card. We've got a, a wand card with a pass the, the feed the toad marker and another sword card. So this means that any cards played this round that either have uh, their abilities triggered by sword or wands will get to do their abilities. And uh, the one pass symbol, which I'm going to show you here, which is in the top corner there, means that the the feed the toad token is passed one person clockwise. Now we move on to the play and reveal phase where we are going to choose three cards of our five cards in our hand to play face down. And then uh, once we have done that, we will reveal them simultaneously uh, after everyone has chosen their cards and put them face down. So let's have a look here. Okay. All right, I know what I'm going to go for. I got my three down. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you. So let's flip them up. I have two lions. Uh-oh. I have two lions. You have two lions. And we. Ha I have a, the blue scarecrow, so he's going to get his ability. I have a clockmaker. And you have a clockmaker. Okay, so then what we do is we're going to take our actions. Now, the actions go in turn order, so you start with the person with the feed the toad token or in the case of a normal game the card so uh my scarecrow he has plus one coin here but then he also has an additional plus one if there was a sword card out which there is so he gets me two coins that i can use to spend so i am going to buy let me have a look at this guy here he looks interesting the chronobot 
he can acquire the lowest cost junk card from the junk bank for his ability and uh, gives two um, tinkerer power as well. Uh, I think I am going to purchase him because he's pretty cool. So I'm going to buy him and immediately replace him with another Chronobot. Look how that had turned out. Uh, that's it for my buying power. And my Lions, their ability is to add to the um, wicked. wicked, yes, the Wicked Struggle later. So that will not come into play uh, until we are done with the action phase. So now I am done. Okay. Um, I, I have, you know, that's... I don't have any money to buy anything. So you're going to pass. You've got yes. no actions to do. So we're going to move on. So now we do the Tinkerer Challenge. You win the Tinkerer Challenge. Why don't you show the camera why? I have plus two Tinker. Right there. That symbol there shows plus two to uh, Tinkerer. I had no t uh, bonus Tinker uh, abilities. Therefore, you get to crush it and you get to take any junk. That's pretty amazing, actually. So you've just got a very expensive piece of junk. Uh, for free. Now we tied, and in turn order, we must take the cheapest uh, of the Mavens because we tied. We both had two Wicked. Mm -hmm. So Tinker lets you get a free, uh, a free junk card. Uh, Wicked lets you get a free uh, Maven card. And the way it works is, if you have, a, if you win by at least two, you can take anyone you want. If you win by one, you can take one up to a cost of five. If you tie for a win. And it's as long as the total that you tied for is not zero, you have to go in turn order and choose the cheapest guy out there. Okay. So I have to take the Chronobot. Do I replace it? And you replace it. Thing? And then what do you get? I get one of these. I guess I get to pick, right? Yes, you do. Well, let me let me see. I'm going to take this one. Who is that, by the way? The Collector. The Collector. You got to say the names. The names are fun. Sorry. Okay, so um, now uh, now that we have done our challenges, you discard all the cards you played. You may choose to discard the cards from your hand if you want to. I'm going to keep mine now. I am too. Okay, and you draw up to your full five-card hand again. So I get to draw three more cards, and so does Lynn. At which point, uh, it is now time for the next turn. So, I'm going to discard all the cards up here into the Fate discard. I'm going to deal out three cards. We have a sword, we have a wand with a pass to feed the toad, and a second wand with a pass to feed the toad, which means it's going to pass twice. So, it's going to go to Lynn and back to me. I'm going to remain the first player, and we've got wands, and we've got swords out there. So let's see how this goes. Um, hmm, this is interesting. Uh, okay, so I chose my three cards. Got my three. Okay, so flip them up. I have a yellow scarecrow, a white rabbit, and a tin man. What have you got? I have a blue scarecrow and two tin men. Oh, well, okay. So starting with me again. Now, the yellow scarecrow, because there are wands out, he will give me the plus one again, so he's giving me two coins. The white rabbit gives me a coin, and if he's the first white rabbit I've played, he gives me an additional coin, so that's another two coins. And the tin man gives me one tinker. So I get four coins to spend, and I ha I'm having a look over here, and there's some interesting stuff out here. I'm debating between the phantom and the relic hunter. I think I'm going to go with the Phantom. So I'm going to purchase the Phantom and put him in my discard and replace him. Now, I've got nothing else I can do at the moment because the Tinker has to wait for the challenge later where he's going to lose because Lynn has two Tin Men. But now Lynn does have two coins this turn. So I what are you going to do? I do have two coins. Um, well, I guess I could... I can buy a Clockmaker. You could buy a Clockmaker. Buy... Let's whoever's whoever's a winged monkey. Yeah, because they only cost one apiece, so that's very they're very affordable. Those assistants. Okay, so now um, the Tinkerer challenge. Lynn wins, but only by one, which means she can get a piece of junk worth up to five for free, which actually is everything out there right now. Yeah, I'm just I'm deciding what I want to build. <laughs> so you, now you can always check on the back of this to see what you would need to build the different machines. You can look at the machines if you want to see what they do. Some of them are needed for the instant win conditions in the game, so they can be rather important. I'm, like, uh, the, isn't the time machine one of the ones that's the needed? The time machine and the fake clock are both mm, needed. For different I'm going to buy a reactor pump. Okay. 
And now well, not buy, just get. Obtain. And no one no one gets the wicked, because we got a, a total of zero on the wicked. So we discard our cards uh, again. Are you going to discard any cards from your um, hand there? No, I'm going to keep them. I am going to keep... Uh, let me see. I'm going to keep mine as well. A red thing's got to come up eventually, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. Oh, feed the toad. I am going to feed, feed the toad. The toad. So I'm going to discard, yes, it tells you to chant Feed the Toad if someone hasn't done it. So I'm going to discard all of these, and then I'm going to flip up. We have a wand to pass the Feed the Toad. We have a Cups card, which is red, and another Cups card. So I'm going to pass the Feed the Toad marker to Lynn. And we are going to see what we're going to choose here. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. I got two Tin Men and, a, and the Red Scarecrow. And a Lucky. Ooh, Lucky. A Yellow Scarecrow and a Red Scarecrow. Oh, you're going for all the monies right now. Well, you got first on this one because you got the Feed the so Toad token. I back. have two, four, five money. That's a lot of money. <laughs> what are you going to buy with all that money? I don't know. There's not actually anyone who costs five. There's a four and then you could take a Clockmaker's. Or there's a three and you could take two assistants. One to be yeah. mentioned later. Um... Let's see. Uh, what does he do? He's pretty awesome, actually. He allows you to steal <laughs> junk from your opponents. I already have one of them. I can also buy junk, but I don't want to buy junk. I think I'm going to... I'm going to purchase the Relic Hunter, mm -hmm. and then I guess also purchase another Clockmaker. Well, flip us up a new uh, card to replace that Relic Hunter. And uh, I have two monies to spend. And look at that, a two money character just came up, the uh, Despair character. Return one of your other in play cards to the top of your draw deck. That cannot be a machine card. That's interesting. I think what I'm going to do, though, is with my two money, I'm going to buy a clockmaker. And I'm going to buy a second clockmaker. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what's coming up right now. Okay, and then we're going to oh. go to the challenge phase. So I have two tinker. I have none. You have anything. none. <laughs> so I get to take, I beat it by two, which means I get to take anything I want. I'm going to take a luminous ether, because that's the most valuable thing out there. And I know that can be used to make lots of cool stuff. Uh, nobody wins the Wicked Challenge, so we're going to discard our cards. Uh, I'm going to keep my other two cards. Are you going to keep your other two? Uh, no, I'm going to discard them. Want we'll to start from scratch? Yeah. Fair enough. So we're going to reshuffle our decks and draw back up. Okay, now feed the toad. There you go. Let's see what we get. <sighs> okay. We have the Fool. Oh, well, place them all out, because remember, they go in, right. in, in order of their... Uh, the Fool has a... The pass Tower. The... Jeez. Oh, we got three Good special fortune. cards? Okay, remember, they go in numerical order okay. upwards. So first off, it's going to pass three times, which means it's going to pass okay. to May. Okay, so I get the Feed the Toad So marker. the Tower goes first, because yes. it's the lowest. Before playing cards, you may discard your entire hand and draw four new cards. Go on. The Fool says, before playing cards after the tower, you may draw one card. If you do, it must be trashed. Oh, okay. And this one says, add the fake value of the other two cards, which is five. No tinkerer phase. No tinkerer phase. Well... That's a little bollocks. Okay. <laughs> well, that just picked my cards for me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. So are you going to discard and draw four? If you full, if you have a handful of tinkerers, no. you might want to. No. All right. So um, I'm not either. Uh, but I'm... Well, hold on. So you, did, you discard everything. Hmm. You lose one card. And you draw... Well, you're going to get to... Well, because the, the, uh, but then you have to trash it. Oh, you'd have to trash yeah. it, right? Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I think, I think I am. I'm going to take advantage, and I'm going to discard my whole hand and draw four cards. Okay. I'm not going to draw and discard though. Uh, I'm just going to then pick my three cards to play. Now you said you're not. You're not. Uh, no. 
Okay, so I'm going to take that. And I'm going to take that. And that. Okay. All right. I'm ready when you are. I am ready. Okay, I got a phantom, a scarecrow, and a clockmaker, which I, I just kind of had to put in. I got oh! a wicked monkey and two lions. So I, I put the phantom in to get three wicked, and you still <laughs> managed to get four wicked. Okay, so it goes by me first. I get one coin. I'm going to buy a winged monkey. I, I have no money. Okay, uh, well, there's no clockmaker. There's no tinkerer, tinkerer. Uh, uh, phase. So you win by one. So you can get something up to cost five. Ah, oh, well... Let's see. I'm going to get. I'm going to get the spare. Okay. Really? Interesting. Okay. You must have a plan for her. Okay. So then uh, I'm going to draw. I'm uh, going to keep the one card I have and draw back up four more. One, two, three, four. How about you? Um. Let me remind myself what I have. Yes. I'm going to keep them. I'm going to get rid of all of these special cards that came out at once on us. And I'm going to deal up one sword, one death card, and one judgment card. So the sword is in effect. Well, death this, says... This is a oh, lower yes. Number. I'm sorry. Judgment is the lower number. Judgment says, after all cards are played, one random in-play card of each player is trashed. Oh, no. Junks, junk and machines are discarded. Uh, death card says, uh, this card has no effect in the first two rounds of the game, but we are past the first two rounds. You must trash your hand in the discard phase. So the two cards you have left over will also have to be trashed. So, Everything ooh, is getting trashed. Yeah, that's kind of brutal. That's, um, that's hmm. nice. Yeah, I'm a little, little iffy on that. So I'm going to... Your hand? Uh, so your whole hand is definitely trashed and one random one from the cards yeah. you played is trashed. So that's what this is going to be a rough round for us. Uh, I think I've picked what I want to do though. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, it's, 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 it's a toffee. It's a gamble. It is. Because, yeah, let's do yeah. it. All right. So I played the clockmakers, the chronobot and the white rabbit. You played, of course, all good stuff. The, uh, Oh, yeah. You got a junk there, because yeah. that, that'll just be discarded instead of trash. The Collector and the Relic Hunter. So now, again, for how this goes is, um, after all cards are played, one random in-play card is trash. So shuffle them up, and the other person will pick a rando. Here, go ahead, pick one for me. Middle. Uh, you trash my White Rabbit. He gets into the trash stack here. This one. Yes! Oh, it's discarded. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> you knew it was there, huh? Okay. So, all right. So now we've got those played, and then we're also going to have to trash our entire hand. Yeah, that was so. just the Tin Man and a Clockmaker's. So. Yeah, for me it was uh, two uh, two lions. So, okay. So I've got the because uh, it went back to me. Mm -hmm. I've got the 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 the, the toad. Toad. Yes, I've got the feed the toad token. So, uh, but I wound up with no money. <laughs> Uh, I wound up with absolutely no money, so... Uh, I have no money either. Okay, so we're going to pass on. Uh, I do... I win the Tinker Challenge by two points, so I can get anything I want. I'm going to take the Analog Encryptor and replace it, and you win the Wicked Channel Challenge by two, which means you can take anything you want. Um, I'm going to get Greed. Okay. And this is how you play the game. So we, we go through and it's 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 it plays. Oh, I love that card. He is great. <laughs> so you, it plays as a deck builder. You're slowly building up your deck, uh, but there is a little bit more to it. The fate cards are, are very different because of how they they alter what effects you can actually use, as well as having strange, unexpected effects happen. You play either until someone is able to get one of the instant win uh, conditions which are collecting certain cards and then playing all of them on a turn. You either have uh, win by playing the time machine and the reactor pump at once or uniting the three sisters, greed, despair, and vanity. That's why you took yeah. it. You were going for the I three have, sisters. I have two of them already. Mm. And playing them all at once. Or by collecting uh, and playing Pumpkin Ted uh, along with 
the um clockmakers. the clockmakers and the what was that last machine? It was the fate clock. The fate clock, yes. And if you do any of those, you will instantly win the game. If you don't, however, if no one is able to get one of the instant win conditions, you play through until the deck is empty, you reshuffle the fate deck, you again discard three cards like you do during the setup, and you play through it a second time. After the second time of playing through it, the person with the most victory points will rule Autopia and therefore win that way rather than winning by escaping. And the victory points are listed on all of the cards that you purchase. They have victory points in their bottom right-hand corner. Machine cards can be worth quite a bit more points though which is why you might want to save up the junk to buy the machine cards because you might be strategizing to win by victory points so that's it that is how you play the game of lucky's misadventures so now we're going to head back over we're going to talk about how this game feels and how it plays and we're going to rate it and review it okay welcome back that was uh that was how you play a game of lucky's misadventures so uh, now we're going to talk about how this game feels, and we're going to rate it and review it. So let's start with uh, negatives. Do you have any negatives that you want to draw attention to with this game? Um, my only real negative, it's not, it's not that big a deal, but on the, um, on the little cheat sheets, mm -hmm. um, some of the, the instant win conditions, it's not really that clear what, what you need they, for them. What, they, what you need. I agree. Because um, it's the one with Pumpkin Jack. It's just like the pictures from the cards, and you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, and then you got to look it up in the book. Yeah. yeah. Um, otherwise, though, the I would say other other than that one win condition, because the other ones kind of spell it out better. Yeah. Uh, other than that one win condition, uh, the cheat sheets are quite good. But my gripe is with the cheat sheets, too, and my gripe is that I wish there were more of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a four-player game, and there's only two cheat sheets. They made them this nice, durable, thick ca uh, cardboard, which is nice, but they could have done a thinner card stock, maybe, and gotten away with having two more. Would have mm -hmm. been good. Uh, other than that, though, the game itself, I don't have any gripes with how it plays. Um, I think it plays as a quite a good uh, deck builder. I mean, I like deck builders, and this is a good one. Um, so, now, there's a lot of deck builders out there. And the basic mechanics of this are fairly similar to, to the basic deck builders. But let's talk about some of the good stuff about it. Uh, and specifically some of the stuff that sets it apart from other deck builders. So you want to go first? What do you got? Um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is that there is a definite end, which I do like. Mm. Because um, just games going on and on and on with no end annoy me. Yeah, so I like, uh, with that end in mind... I like the many ways to win. So you've got you've got a bunch of instant wins, which I'll let you end the game early. There's three of them. Uh, three of them where you collect certain cards in your deck, get them out at once, and there's ways to kind of... Because you, you play three of your five cards, hold on to two others, so like you can be holding a couple of those cards and be like, where is that other one? And then you finally get it, and you're like, boom! I win. And there's other ways to like put cards back on top of the deck, again, just mm -hmm. to hold them for, until you can get the, the right cards. So there is, there is uh, definitely some, some ways to do that. But if you don't do that, if no one does that, it's 14 turns, done, and then whoever has the most points in their mm -hmm. deck, which is like the classic way to win uh, a lot of deck builders, is, is just having the most points in your deck. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, it, uh, I would say I, I agree with you. I like there being a, a definite end. It's not going to drag on. But also, in addition to that, I really like the whole multiple ways to win mm -hmm. because like you'll 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 be striving towards trying to get one of the sets for an instant win but at the same time you're occasionally like oh but i just want to get that card because it's worth a lot of points mm -hmm. and if no if nobody wins with an instant win i want to have a lot of points in my deck right mm -hmm. what else do you think uh i like that um you can purchase machines by discarding junk mm. and then those machines give you special abilities yeah those are really cool those are really cool. It's a very interesting uh, mechanic because you, you, you collect the junk, which does nothing. When it comes up, if you play it, it doesn't do anything yeah. unless you play the right combination of junk and then you cull it and get a machine, which then the machine is worth t machines are worth tons of points. There's, is there one or two of them? I think there's two there's, that are needed for instant wins. Yeah, there's two that are needed for two separate instant win yeah. situations. But other than that, I mean... Um, they're also just worth tons of points. They're though. worth points, and they also... They give you an ability that you can 
yeah. use every time you play them. Yeah, and it's quite good abilities too. Uh, I like uh, I like a lot of the abilities in the cards. I also something I want to draw attention to. So the the timing deck is is really interesting because, all right, see the basic cards come up: the wands, the the cups, and the swords, and they release extra abilities on your cards. You're like, oh, I got this card. It does this thing. It gives me money. But then when cups come up, I get to take a free card or something like that. And I love that. I love that whole suddenly cards which already had a purpose now have more of a purpose. Um, that's really cool. Also, the occasional weird effects that come up with the unique timing cards where mm -hmm. something will come up and rather than just let some of your cards have extra abilities, it'll be like, you have to do this extra weird thing, which you didn't think of and you didn't plan for it. And you might lose cards or it might be really great for you. You might get extra, uh, extra options of things to do, get extra mm -hmm. cards. Um, I kind of really dig that. And that's really different. I can't think of another, um deck builder I've played that that really has a mechanic like that the what they call it, the fate deck right yeah the only game that I can think of uh, just I'm sure there are many that I'm not thinking of well, of course but, yeah. but the only one that I can think of that has anything like that that we own is um is it world without end that has the events the yeah beginning? okay so there are there are ones that do those random events but yeah. it's not quite the same because with this like I said some of the cards, rather than being a particular event and something very different, they just open up more options for the mm -hmm. cards in your hand, which is what uh, a bigger part of what I really like about that. But yeah, there are other things where you draw random events in the turn, but I'm just saying that, that, that having the timing deck have that dual purpose with also either having the events or opening up uh, extra abilities for the cards in your hand or both. I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. It's a really neat thing. Yeah, there are there are other games though that mm -hmm. you're right where you draw events at the beginning of that turn. So, um, is there anything else you want to discuss about Lucky's Misadventures? Um, I don't think so. Okay, do you want to go first or second on the rating on this one? I'll go first. You want to go first? Okay. Go first. What you're gonna uh, what you're gonna rate out of ten? Lucky's Misadventures, episode forty two, Lost in Autopia. I love the title of this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I'm gonna rate it. A nine. Whoa! That's wow. A nine pumpkin Ted's. Nine pumpkin Ted's. <laughs> pumpkin Ted's a character in here. Yes. Nine. Wow. Um. I didn't know you were going to be that high. I knew you were going to be. I was guessing like eight, nine. So what goes into your decision to give it a nine? Uh, I think a lot of it is the theme, mm -hmm. even though I always say the theme doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, you're such a lying liar that lies when you say that. So it's, um, it's, it's... I like I like the theme. It's got cute little pictures, which is again I say that art doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also it's fun. It's fun to play, yeah. and it's not just. Um, it's more interesting than just a regular deck builder right that doesn't have anything extra even like a deck builder that just has like one extra thing you know it has a bunch of extra things yes. but it doesn't feel cluttered or that it's too many things going on no it's it, it's it's pretty easy to learn i agree and the extra things are kind of really necessary at this point because deck builders have been around for a little while now and if you just do a standard deck builder people be like oh well how is this different from ascension yeah. or you know or dominion or whatever and and, and you got to have something to set it apart and this i think it does it's it's i mean it's got the, the the standard deck builder structure but within those couple of extra things the 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 collecting of junk to get artifacts and the timing deck with its extra effects and um the the bidding on the wicked and the and the tinker to get free cards and you know uh, all of that i think is interesting mm -hmm. it's interesting and it's cool so uh, i'm also pretty positive on this though not quite as as positive as you are with your nine i'm gonna give it a seven out of ten stars which is i like it and i'm always willing to play it if someone asks so lynn gave it a nine which is she loves it she thinks this game is phenomenal um that is a two thumbs up review from us here at the board game captain we both really liked this game uh, based on Lynn giving it a 9, I'm pretty sure this game is going to be hitting the table <laughs> a lot in the near future. We've already been playing it a bunch, though, and you've been, like, asking to play it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, like, we're, we're like, hey, what do you want to play? And it's lately, this has been one of your go-to, ooh, let's play Lucky's Misadventures kind of thing on game nights. So, uh, there you have it. 
If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, either on Lucky's Misadventures or this on this video, feel free to put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this review and tutorial and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game captain. That's captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And hit the little bell icon on my channel so you get alerts every time I upload a new video. And until next time, game, game on. on.